Okay, we're going to do a review of the Smith & Wesson Model 1.5 Single Action Revolver in 32 Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson made <coughs> several different uh, models before this. There was the number one, which was the 22 short, which they're kind of famous for. And there was a Smith & Wesson Model 1.5 uh, that was in 32 rimfire. And then a model one and a half second issue, which was also in 32 rim fire. And these were the older pistols, like post Civil War, where the barrel swung upwards. There would be a latch down here, and the barrel tipped up or backwards. And you took the cylinder out, and you had to manually push the uh, cartridges out. This model is called the Smith and Wesson model one and a half single action. This is the first 32 caliber revolver Smith & Wesson made with the brake top and the automatic ejectors where you break the gun and tip the barrel down instead of up. Um, it's a five shot gun and like it says single action with the spur trigger. Another feature about this gun is it has a rebounding hammer. Now what that does is it allows you to carry the gun loaded and the hammer is actually back a ways inside the frame, not all the way down on top of wood, resting on top of a live round. So this model here had the innovation of the rebounding hammer, which was a safety feature. Um, interesting story about this. I was looking for a pistol to shoot 38 Smith & Wesson. And I went on the gun broker and I found a few of them. That would be the number three, I believe, uh, in this style of weapon. And this guy had this listed as a 38 Smith & Wesson pistol. But I got it. The price wasn't too terrible, and the condition was really nice. So when I got the gun, I realized that he listed it wrong. It was not 38 caliber. It was a 32 caliber. But the gun was in such nice shape, and I really, you know, I paid a decent price for it. I didn't get a steal, but then again, I didn't pay some ridiculous amount of money for it either. So, it's a nice old gun. It's a neat little gun. Uh, part of history, so I kept it. So, Smith & Wesson was famous for its brake actions, you know, which is a standard thing. You pull the little toggle, and then come back, and it automatically ejects the uh, ca empty cases. This gun here is a five shot, and like I said with the rebounding hammer, if you look here you don't see the firing pin protruding. A lot of the older designs, when the gun was fired, the uh, firing pin would stick through, you know. So when you um, had a loaded gun, the reason they tell you to leave one cylinder unloaded is without the rebounding hammer, the, the firing pin sticks down and it's protruding here. And if you had all five uh, cartridges loaded in there, that firing pin would be resting on a primer and if you thump the back of the gun or drop it or whatever, it would go off. So <clears throat> this is a pretty good uh, innovation safety feature. And as you see, this doesn't lock. These mechanisms on these old guns are very simple, very plain. You put your five shots in there, pull it back, little spur trigger, and single action only. But Smith sold this innovative design, it's for quick reloading. Kick out your cartridges, put your five cartridges back in, and it carried on through the lemon squeezers, and this model kind of evolved they ended up putting a trigger guard on it, and then they made uh, on this frame, I believe, like a double action um, with the exposed hammer, because Smith and Wesson had the hammerless uh, new, called new departure, or the the safety uh, hammerless pistols or the lemon squeezers, but they still made a pistol with an exposed hammer trigger guard that was a double action handgun also. 
So Smith & Wesson had uh, a couple different variations in their line for years. And this one here is pretty nice, bird's head grip. Uh, I think that's plastic or hard rubber grips on there, curved. It kind of really doesn't fit much in the hand. As you can see, you get a couple fingers around that grip, hang on to it. But it's a neat little gun. This one's nickeled. Uh, the nickel held up pretty good. It's been fired. Uh, there's a brass front sight on there. I don't know if that's original or somebody uh, replaced that over the years. From the serial numbers, the guns were made from the 1870s to like 1892. This one was probably made sometime from the serial number uh, in the 1880s. So it's about a 130 year old pistol. And like I said, it was in decent shape. The bore has a little bit of pitting in it, but most of these old firearms, that's uh, how you'll find them. And I did go out and shoot it, and it shoots very well. It works. Uh, mechanically, it's, it's in good shape. But as for accuracy or hitting anything with this little gun, as you can see, the rear sight is just this little notch there. And then you got that little tiny, like on all these old guns, that little thin little blade up on the barrel. It sits in a groove. So the sights really, there ain't much there in terms of sights. They're small. Pull that back for you. Now you can. So it's like you can barely see that sight on there when you line it up. But. Still, interesting old little gun. And then we have, like on all Smiths, you have your patent dates and that stamped into the top. And it's pretty neat the way it comes over through the top here, then up around the top of the frame. Interesting little thing. And the serial number is down here on the butt. And I think it has a serial number on the uh, cylinder, yes it does. The cylinder has a small serial number also on that somewhere there so you could tell if the gun you know still has the original cylinder in it. I don't know if you can see the numbers. Maybe right up in there. And you, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's not too terrible inside. It's been fired. Uh, you know, and they either use black powder or even if they got into where they use smokeless, probably had corrosive primers back in the old days, even with a smokeless load. But another one in the lineup for Smith and Wesson, the one and a half in 32. I was trying to get one in uh, 38 Smith and Wesson, and that's nicknamed the Baby Russian. Uh, pistol. Okay, I did a quick check on it. The 38 Smith and Wessons are called uh, single action first model, second model, and so forth. Um, and they look identical to this, but they're probably a larger gun and a larger caliber. So I thought it would have the number three, but it doesn't. It's just called the Smith and Wesson 38 single action. I guess this was back when they call this the one and a half. It was a throwback to the company where they were giving them uh, names. So I'm sorry for that. I stand corrected. The 38 caliber is uh, single action, and there's a first, second model, so on. And they were nicknamed the Baby Rush because they're probably a little bit larger gun than this. <clears throat> and uh, I took it out and fired it, so we're going to have another video right behind this. I mean, taking this down onto the range. So, that's about it on this.